Hello and welcome to the Story Behind the Stories, your weekly look at the pages of the Nipawa Banner and Press. Thank you very much for taking a little bit of your time this week and spending it here with us on NACTV. I'm Owen Devereaux, news reporter with the Banner and Press, welcoming you once again. Joined this week by Casper Warehan. Casper, great to have you here today. Thanks for having me. Good to be back and good to have you back as well, Owen. That's right. You and Ken took over the duties of the show last week, did you not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. were partnered up on the show together, so we had a bit of a, a tag team there on the show. Uh, yeah. Much appreciated uh, for Ken to sit in with me on that edition of the Story Behind the Story. And again, to share, maybe overshare, hey, the reason for that was uh, took some vacation time. Took about a week's vacation there because it's really accumulated. <laughs> Every time I get my paycheck, I look at the accumulated vacation time. It's like, oh, geez. Um, Maybe I should take a vacation. I think that may have been the first actual vacation time I took since 2019, maybe. <laughs> the number's really getting up there. Ken's getting a little concerned. I mean, uh, it's like, take some time, take a vacation or two, you know, take a week or 12, get it out of there. So I decided to take one right now before, uh, before the snow hits, so... But again, it, from the sounds of it and from the looks of it of last week's edition, everything was well in hand. And fortunately, when I came back this week, I didn't muck up the productions too much. And we were able to get out another very good, I think, and very informative edition of the newspaper. As always, we got to start on the front page. And Casper, you were able to get some great pictures and some information from this year's edition of the Terry Fox Run. Yeah, uh, it was great weather to have the event this year. I know uh, just luck of the draw, some years we get some rain, uh, and that's not so great, but uh, they stick through it anyway and uh, carry on. Uh, but this year it was all sun, smiles, and some ice cream, as usual, uh, at the DQ halfway point. Uh, and we have that marvelous picture on the front page. Again, pick up a hard copy of the paper because you want to get a good look at this and the rest of the stories in the paper for this week but uh, uh, I just happened to be snapping a general crowd shot there with uh, the Terry Fox run sign in the forefront and some people in the background and uh, this one kid this one particular kid happened to notice that I was doing that and immediately stopped turned looked at the camera and just had like a thousand gigawatt smile <laughs> on his face while he's got some ice cream splattered on there it was just fantastic and yeah, just great support again this year. Big crowd, Owen. So I'm really excited to uh, find out later on what the final results are for the funds raised. That's right. Now, if you're curious as well, when you pick up a copy of the Banner and Press, we've just got the picture in this week's edition. We also have some information from um, Gladstone's event as well inside the pages. If you're wondering about the final numbers and whatnot, we're going to have an expanded story. We're going to have extensive details an upcoming edition of the Banner and Press. Right now, they're just dotting the I's, they're crossing the T's, they're paying the bills, as it were, and they're gonna figure out what the official total is, and we're gonna have a version of that coming up, and we're gonna be very happy to be able to share that with you. Because each and every year, I don't know how they do it, Casper, but they seem to be able to top each and every year. Like, y you, when you were down there, did you happen to see, they usually put up the little poster boards of all the different years, all the different pictures, and all the different numbers, you know. And it's, it's really quite impressive to see it el gradually, year over year, continue to top itself. Yeah, it's really something. Because they had that... Uh uh, the little sort of like canteen yep. area uh, by the track. They're just like covered in poster boards of photos and all of that from different years. And it's just, it really is something to take in. It's, uh, it's a very attracting thing for anyone who goes there to support it to get drawn to as well and just see how things have progressed over the years. And yeah, this is a great year to add on to that as well. And it's a wonderful way to celebrate the legacy of all those previous years, and perhaps those maybe that aren't with us anymore who saw the value in supporting the Terry Fox run and did so, so significantly. Now don't forget, as we said, we're gonna have more details in a future edition of the Banner Press, as well as more pictures. Casper has a whole heap and bunch that they were able to get during the, uh, during the event, so we're gonna be putting those in with the story as well upcoming. We do have a number, though, for the Gladstone event. 
Wonderful to see that the Gladstone Terry Fox run and Pancake Breakfast was able to bring in roughly around $7,000 from what we've heard. So congratulations to Gladstone to see them step up in that way is, is amazing. That is a fantastic total for a community that size. Absolutely, yeah. It, I was blown away when uh, Carol Pottinger came in and provided that number. I, like, literally, I didn't know what to say other than, wow! <laughs> 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 so, very thankful for those details. Yeah, it looked like the pancake breakfast had a good turnout, and, well, aside from the, the good cause that they're supporting, uh, understandable also because delicious pancakes who doesn't want it <laughs> but yeah absolutely fantastic turnout for that event all right this could cause some controversy <laughs> but that's what this show is all about i've always been a waffle man myself mm. if i got the choice between pancakes and waffles i go waffles every time i don't know pancakes eh. but waffles that's waffles that's where it's at Oh, that's understandable. Yeah, <laughs> I' not gonna lie. I'm a sucker for a good homemade waffle. Yeah. Haven't had one in quite a while, but ooh, those are just right. <laughs> oh yeah, and French toast as well. Yes. Oh great. Now, <laughs> now I feel like breakfast for dinner type thing. You're gonna have to have a second lunch, Owen. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, let's shift into the pages of this week's paper. And Casper, you got some great shots as well as some follow-up details on something that's really wonderful to see the restoration, the rehabilitation, and the maintenance of a beloved historic landmark for not just Nipawa, but for the entire area in terms of Stony Creek. Absolutely, yeah. This is a landmark that, uh, well, I'm sure a whole lot of people know about. It's a pretty significant uh, building, uh, and it's really hard to miss when you go down to the Riverbend Park here in Nipawa. Um, the building is quite old, as some people may know. It was originally built in 1897. It was just a little bit west of Nipwa there, and then eventually was relocated to the park in Nipwa. Uh, so it's been standing for quite a while, and it has been really well kept, but it does show its age. Uh, and the Lions Club here has known uh, and has been planning to work on revamping it a little bit uh, to just sort of help bring some more life into it. Uh, so that right now is actually in the process of being fully repainted uh, on the exterior. And so far it is looking fantastic. Uh, I believe it's Doug Bodnerchuk. I apologize if I mispronounce the last name there. Out of Austin, Manitoba and his company are doing the repainting and fantastic job. Uh, they were in the middle of painting while I was down there. Uh, talking to Tom Borsa and yeah it's looking so fresh so I'm really excited to see that once it's done uh, they're planning on doing shingling as well because they do need some new roofing on there too so it's going to look really sharp in the future. That is fabulous to see and it's so significant that when you have these types of historic items in your community you really need to manage them and maintain them because they are a part of our heritage. So for people to be able to do that and uh, continue to keep that as pristine as it possibly could be, it's really nice to see. Hope that you're gonna take a few minutes. It's on page two of this week's edition of the Banner and Press and learn a little bit about Stony Creek. All right, also on page two, from the past to the present and into the future, we're gonna be talking about the Candidates Forum that recently took place right here in Nipawa for the candidates of Agassiz. And uh, most likely, perhaps you saw it live right here on NAC-TV. If you weren't able to watch it as it was going on, there are several rebroadcasts that are going to be going on throughout the weeks leading up to the election. Keep an eye on the uh, schedule for NAC-TV, or you can find it right at the end of the story. I uh, came, spoke to NAC-TV and confirm the details of when they were going to be doing the rebroadcasts, and I have those in the story for you. So keep that in mind. I think it's very important to take a few minutes, even though you might think politics is a little dry, a little, it's like, it's like vanilla, it's like vanilla ice cream perhaps for some people, but no, I, I think it's very important. These are our, our future, this is our leadership that we need to sort of pay attention to the future of the province and which way it's moving is going to be decided in this upcoming election. 
So don't think that it doesn't matter, because it very much does. So I was able to go down there to the back room of the Nipawa Public Library, and it was filled to capacity. Um, there were a lot of people in there that were interested in learning some things from the candidates for the upcoming election. And they were able to learn some things about some of the candidates. All right. Now, again, I try my darndest not to put opinion into the stories. And hopefully that does shine through. Every single person who is a reporter or journalist does have an opinion for themselves. But it's the important thing to take that opinion and take it out of the story so that you have no idea what that opinion is. But this isn't, this isn't uh, uh, the newspaper. This is the story behind the stories. And as you know, as I've said many a time, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you on this show. I'm going to shoot straight with you. And again, these are not the opinions of the Nipawa Banner and Press. They are not the opinions of NACTV. And they may not be your opinions. But maybe they should be. Perhaps they should be. Because i got to say, it was extremely disappointing, I thought, in that there were three candidates that showed up, and only two of them were for Agassiz. Uh, the representative for the Progressive Conservative Party uh, and the representative for the Keystone Party of Manitoba were the only ones that showed up. Um, it, was, it was extremely disappointing. I'm going to have to check the name of the third candidate for the Manitoba Liberal Party out of Spruce Woods, not Agassiz. Spruce Woods, who showed up, uh, Michelle Budwinski, I believe it is, and if I mispronounce that, uh, Michelle, if you happen to watch the show, I do apologize. But again, it was just it was Jody for the Progressive Conservatives, Jody Byram, and it was just uh, Mark, I believe Mark Wilson was the name of the gentleman for the Keystone Party. There was no representative from the New Democratic Party, and there was no technically no representative for Agassiz from the Liberal Party there. <sighs> How do you expect to be the voice of your people if your people can't even hear your voice? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, that's old-fashioned the way it, sh it is there. But it, Michelle, for example, was very articulate, very astute with uh, some of her answers, as were all the candidates. Um, and it was like, wow, okay, I could see Michelle swaying some votes if people could vote for her here, but they can't because she's not running in Agassiz. She's running in Spruce Woods. So it was very good by the Nipawan District Chamber of Commerce to put the event together. It was very good by NACTV to record the event and work to make sure that it was broadcast live so that you could see it in the moment. And it was very good from Jody and Mark to take the time out of their busy schedules and come here. And even very good of Michelle to step up for the Manitoba Liberal Party, as she did. But very disappointed, extremely disappointed. Like I said, is a little bit of opinion on my part, and I do apologize if it is offensive in any way, shape, or form to anyone out there. But again, this is what this show is about. It's about sharing these details behind the scenes. I don't put this into the stories. I always attempt to be as fair and as straightforward and as balanced in the coverage as I can on the page but this right here is one of those little things it's like do better if you want to represent us show up well maybe i'm wrong well no that's, that's a good point um you know like obviously who knows i don't know what's going on with them but there might be something that have prevented uh the candidate from the ndp uh from coming to the event or a representative from coming to the event, but it definitely would have been nice to at least have somebody there representing the party, uh, such as with the, the Liberal Party there. They had Michelle come in and uh, do that for them. Uh, but just to have some sort of party presence there yep. to try and intrigue voters into considering them as an option because, you know, just because a riding has voted a certain way in the past doesn't mean it's going to continue to do so, right? People's yep. opinions change. People's needs change. Uh, and that gets reflected through the party that you elect. You know, they're the ones that are in charge and trying to change those things uh, or, or implement 
things that maybe you didn't consider before. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have those put out there to have representatives out here and working in the area to say pe tell people, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what we're about. So it, it is definitely disappointing that uh, not everybody was there or able to be there. And again, I just want to state, Casper brought up a very valid point. There can be extenuating circumstances for the reason for the person not being able to show up. So if there were family issues, there were family uh, considerations to put in for either of the candidates that didn't show up, I, can, I sincerely do apologize. I don't mean to assume anything like that. Um, if that is the case, I do genuinely apologize and understand completely the reason for not being there. If it's just the case of this is already a decided riding, then no. I don't apologize in any way, shape, or form. There's no such thing as a decided riding. Uh, there shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And even though this one is, over the years, voted very blue, <laughs> let's be honest, as Casper said, the dynamics are changing. The configurations within this riding are changing. And, you know, deal with it, work with it. If you're a member of the Liberals, if you're a member of the NDP, don't assume rural ridings are, are lost causes. Come out here, do the work. And again, for the progressive conservatives, and even the Keystone, even though they're uh, not running in every single riding, put the work in, put the time in. Every vote matters, so hopefully they don't see us as you know a waste of time because that's what it kind of felt like as not as a reporter but just as a voter i'm a voter in this riding just like you and it felt like it wasn't worth their time and that rubs me the wrong way but again like i said this is a lot of opinion i'm throwing out there and if you agree with it wonderful if you disagree with it that's fine as well um, but we always appreciate you tuning in and listening to my little diatribes and tirades on this show. And uh, hopefully you'll continue to in the future, even after the election is all said and done. And we got so much election stuff in here as well, Casper. I will say this. I am very appreciative. And I do thank Richard Davies, who is the representative for the Manitoba Liberals in the riding of Agassiz. I sent an email out to him as well as some other individuals uh, that we have not heard from yet um, and he wanted to get a short bio. In the, in the annals, we want to be fair as possible. About two weeks ago, we did a page explaining Agassiz and explaining Ryden Mountain, you know, the demographics of the voters, the uh, structure, all the communities within those ridings, as well as the candidates. Two weeks ago, we very promptly got the short bios from the uh, members of the NDP for both and the Progressive Conservatives for both. Very thankful of that. The Manitoba Liberals didn't have any of that information confirmed yet, nor did the Keystone Party, nor did the Green Party, really, for that matter. So we kept things open. We said as soon as we have that information, we're going to have it on the page so you can decide which one of these individuals best represents you and your needs. So fortunately, um, most recently, we received some information from the representative from the Keystone Party, who is Mark Wilson, as I said, and as well, Richard Davies. He sent me an email, said, thank you very much. Appreciate that, Owen. Here is some information. Hopefully it's something that you're going to be able to uh, sort of share. And uh, we do appreciate that. So you can find that, the Meet the Candidates for Agassiz, on page 5. So we uh, were able to share just that one thing that you can sort of educate yourself on. And not only that, this is something a little bit different. We did it because we thought it had value for you, the voter. But we also did it because, well, there's too fewer of us working at the Nipawa Banner and Press that were working here in the last provincial election. So, you know, we're missing 80, hour, 80 man hours, 80 person hours, however you want to say it, uh, of, of a week here. So the representatives from the Keystone Party sent us a press release. The representatives from the Progressive Conservative Party sent us a press release. And you can find those unedited 
on page 18. And we very specifically note these following articles have been submitted by the political parties and or the candidates currently running. These are their thoughts, their considerations. We don't want you, these are, in essence, these aren't news stories and we don't want you to look at them as news stories. These are opinion pieces from those individuals and treat them as such. So that way you're able to educate yourself on what each of these individuals wants to do in the future. I know sometimes, like I said, politics can feel a little dry and you just want to get through it, but these are important days. So take that extra five minutes and educate yourself. I hope that you do. All right, now, again, we're, we're through my little diatribes here. We're going to get into some good stuff, some more fun stuff, Casper. And this article here, you previewed something that's really become a great business tradition for Nipuan area. And that's what's the big idea. Yeah, so it really has become a staple, really, of Nipua to hold this each and every year. It's entering its eighth year this year, uh, the What's the Big Idea. A big entrepreneurial event that uh, helps in a way, in its way, uh, businesses get started or expand. Um, it's sort of like a Dragon's Den style uh, idea. Uh, businesses or prospective businesses come in, they pitch their ideas to a panel of judges, uh, and it is going to be at the Legion again this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully get some grant money and prizes out of that. Uh, to help kickstart their businesses. Uh, and it sounds like it's going to be another good year this year. Uh, they had already, I believe, four businesses registered for the event with more pending uh, when I spoke to uh, Marilyn Crew there. So really looking forward to seeing how it will turn out this year on October 12th. Uh, I'll probably run down there myself this year. And in past years, it's been Kira, and she's done a wonderful job of covering that. Uh, but. It's, it's something that's open to anybody in the area, really. Uh, and that's something that Maryland really wanted to emphasize. You don't have to be within the town limits of Nipah. You can be from Mendoza, you can be from Gladstone. Heck, even businesses from Brandon have come in. Uh, so really looking forward to seeing who has all come in for that uh, and what the ideas are going to be this year. That's right. And again, Marilyn, this is a pet project to her. She has spearheaded it throughout the years. It was her vision that uh, brought it forward. And it's really grown and it's really developed over the last few years. It's become something that is looked forward um, by many within the business community, within the regional, the regional sector of business. So to see these young entrepreneurs and these developing businesses see the potential in it and the move and, and be part of it, it's great to see. Uh, Nipawa sometimes, an area sometimes, has a difficult time sort of latching onto something and turning it into a new tradition. But this is one of those ones that seems to have broken through and really wonderful to see that it has done so because it's so helpful for all these young entrepreneurs. And again, maybe I shouldn't say young entrepreneurs. Young is relative because there are some, you know, as you said, established business and uh, entrepreneurs that have taken part in it as well. So it's, it's the whole hodgepodge. Yeah, it really is. Uh, like we've had uh, in previous years, just for one example, like we've had Smile Punoy Foods come here uh, for the one year. Um, and I, I should mention as well, I thought I had it in the story and looking at it again, I apologize, I missed including it. Uh, but the deadline date for application is October 5th. So please make sure if you're interested in possibly participating in this event to contact Marilyn Crew. Uh, by that date. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's finish off with uh, celebration just a little bit down the road into the community of Gladstone. And they were able to celebrate an anniversary, a significant anniversary of the Cenotaph. A beautiful landmark within the community. It's been uh, looked after. They did a rededication for it recently. Uh, we have to thank our salesperson, Joel, who was able to take a camera, go down there. We were, again, this is the story behind the scenes here. We were locked down. It was uh, getting tight towards the deadlines of getting the pages done and all that. And as much as we wanted to be able to be out there ourselves and see it, we just couldn't get away. We had to take care of the pages, get stories on there, get advertising on there. So there was no free person that was able to get away from their desk. And Joel stepped up. Very appreciative of that, Joel. You were able to step up, uh, say, I can step up here and go down there, get some pictures, get some interviews. 
And because that's not his job. He also wrote an article on it. And I thought it was a pretty good article. You know, he used all the letters. Uh, most of the letters were, you know, were in the right order as well. That was greatly appreciated. Yep, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Joel, thank you for that. And he got the information on something great. He, uh, I said this so many times. Even though we are the Nipawa banner and press, we like to consider ourselves the region's newspaper. And that means going out to communities like Carberry or Gladstone or Plumas as best we can. And sometimes we're able to, and sometimes, like this week, for example, we're not able to. But that's why we always love your support. If you have pictures or information to send our way, that is always so appreciated. In a minute or two, we're going to go over that for you and uh, let you know how you can send that our way. With the little time we got left, just going to quickly acknowledge the Meet the Teacher section. Diane Warner uh, did such a tremendous job, so much work behind the scenes to put the page together. Oh my God, you think something that looks so basic and straightforward and simple would be basic and straightforward and simple? Nope, <laughs> not so much. It's one of those times I almost wish Diane was here to, be on, to, to explain just all the nuances that go on about putting a special feature like that together, but you're not allowed to curse on this show, so she can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just the reality of it. So uh, all I can say is sometimes these types of features are very interesting. Yeah, they, re they really can be. They really can be. And oh my gosh, just being in uh, sort of the same work area there and just knowing a little bit of what goes on. Like there's so much communicating and organizing you have to do. And that's just like... The, the little tip of the iceberg, really. So uh, very appreciative of Diane bearing with the whole ordeal and yeah. putting it together for us. It looks great. That's right. Thank you as well to the school division who assisted on this. Diane, who put it all together. Uh, great. It's four pages of uh, just some details on the school year and some of the teachers that are going to be in new locations. So wonderful to be able to share that with you each and every year. There's so much more we could talk to you about, but we're running out of time. We've got our sports section, the Nipawa Titans. We've got the high school soccer. We've got some golf highlights from the Sunflower Classic. All that information. That's why you need to be able to pick up an actual copy of the Banner and Press. You can find it anywhere in Nipawa or in surrounding communities. Uh, even into Brandon as well. We uh, drop off a few hundred, about five, six hundred, I think, into Brandon in some certain specific businesses. If you're not able to get a physical copy of it, you can always find it online. It goes live every Friday morning at 9 a.m. on mywestman.ca. So once again, if you have any story suggestions, you can always get in touch with us over at uh, 476 3401, the number we can be reached at via phone or through email at news at nipawabanner.com. If you have a sports-specific thing, appreciate it if you send it to sports at nipawabanner.com. You can send it to news if you like. might get buried underneath the, 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 the other ones, but it, we'll, we'll find it eventually. So always appreciate it. We try to get as much of your tips and information out there as we can. So again, as usual, Casper, great to have you here. You did, you did a lot of work. I was still coming off vacation mode, so I, I sort of coasted a bit. So appreciate you stepping up like that. Absolutely. Thanks again for uh, having me here and looking forward to another one. I know we're getting pretty geared up for it already. So Most definitely. And thank you, as always. We appreciate your patronage with the newspaper. We appreciate you taking a little bit of time each and every week and tuning in right here to NAC TV and the story behind the stories. Have yourself another fantastic weekend.